All right. You, you can tell that we all know each other pretty well, right? Um, so I'm going to let each of the panelists uh, introduce themselves uh, just to give you an idea. My name is Shanta. I'm the customer service coordinator at Weaver Apps here in Hamilton, and uh, I'm one of the uh, one of the organizers for WordCamp Hamilton this year. Um, being the last session of the day, thank you all for sticking around. Thank you all for being here at WordCamp Hamilton, and um, we hope we will see you at the after party later on. So. Um, without further ado, uh, let me first introduce Mike Demo from Bold Grid. Then you'll have Brian Hogg, and then you'll have Michelle Ames, and then, of course, Adam Warren, the one and only. So I will let them introduce themselves one by one, and then we will get to your wonderful questions. Um, when you are asking a question, of course, please make sure I can see you. I'm nice and short. Um, please speak loudly enough that I hear you. I'll try and repeat the question as best as I can. And then what I might do is, is hand it off to one, just because I know what these guys do, uh, I might ask one or both or all of them to answer the question. Please feel free to direct it at one or the other if you wish. Mike, over to you. Hey, I'm Mike Demo. I go by Demo. Yes, that is my real name. Uh, I am the open source evangelist for Bold Grid. So I do a lot of community stuff in WordPress, and I also serve on the board at Joomla. So hope you got your tomatoes. <laughs> I'm uh, Brian Hogg. Um, I have several uh, plugins for WordPress, uh, a couple of courses teaching people how to make plugins, and a new one coming out soon for, for uh, basically all my plugins have to do events, so <coughs> people how to set that up on their site. Um, and yeah, former organizer of this conference. Uh, for this year, I've been sitting back, relaxing, and watching everybody else work. Yeah, just watching yeah, them all yeah. around and go, oh, that's cool. Well, thanks to you that this was so easy to pull off. <laughs> just, just saying. No, that's thanks that. <gasps> I'm Michelle Ames. I'm the head of customer success for Give. It's a plugin that works really well for uh, for nonprofits to set up really amazing donations pages. Uh, and I have been part of the WordPress community for about six years now. And I'm the lead organizer for WordCamp Rochester and organizer for WordCamp Buffalo. Hi again, I'm Adam Warner. I am the open source software community manager for SiteLock, a uh, cloud-based website security company. I also own a plugin business called Food Plugins uh, and have been in business since 2011 and have been a long time WordPress user, uh, not developer, uh, user since 2005. Okay. So now you know what these guys all do. Um, I think we have probably less Canadian content on this panel than I think it probably does. <laughs> 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 I'm, from, that again. <laughs> I'm from, from Michigan, is that? Close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I used to cross the Blue Water Bridge quite often. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I mean, we have some honorary Canadians on here, okay? So, so we'll, 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 we'll let them pass. We'll let them pass. Um, okay, so let's open it up to the floor. Does anybody have a question that they'd like to start with? Plug in related, anything? Question over here, okay. sir. Okay, so I mean, I love WordPress, but there's one thing that bugs me about it the most, so I'm going to ask the question about that. Um, so when you hit the update button on a page, it refreshes to the top. Does anyone know any workarounds? Because if you're like on a really long page near the bottom of it, you have to scroll back down to get to where you changed a line. Now is this on the editor itself? Yes. Okay. yes. So the question was, if, when you're on the editor, and you hit the update page, and you're like way, 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 way down at the bottom, it automatically scrolls back up to the top. Is there any way to get around this? Anybody got this? I don't have a very specific solution, although I share your pain. <laughs> <laughs> because I've, I've, I've thought of that very thing uh, through the years. It's a, it's a real um, annoying part of, uh, of updating a page or post. Uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the new editor that's coming, Gutenberg. If you install the Gutenberg plugin, you can uh, use the new uh, WordPress editor that will be in core. Uh, the save draft or the update there, I believe, refreshes without going to the top of the page. Don't quote me 100% on that, but I think that's the case. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea for a new plugin. Because <laughs> <laughs> there should be some way of seeing, like, you know, like I you probably wouldn't want it to be the default, because personally I don't have posts that are that long, so I, I want it to go to the top of the page, verify the, you know, have the link, right, to the, to the go see the content uh, on the front end of the site. 
But uh, yeah, I could definitely see uh, people wanting that for sure. Um, there's a hotkey extension that I don't think goes to the top. Um, I don't know which one is out there, but I just found one at one point. So you can use a hotkey to quick save or a quick update. And I think it keeps you where you are. You'd have to play around in the repo, but I know at one point I had a hotkey plugin that uh, didn't do that. So happy hunting. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the question. Anybody else? Okay, first question's been asked. Now you can start, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yes, please. How are you planning on assisting your clients with the new Gutenberg update? Ooh, how are you planning on assisting your clients with the new <laughs> and improved Gutenberg? All right, who wants to go first? All right, Demo. Uh, well, both is Gutenberg compatible, so. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on, you know, what you have and if your site is going to break with any of the plugins and things. You can. I know people that are doing the safety, you know, using the legacy, I know, bridge on that. But it's really just the next new thing. I think a lot of the fear of this is kind of unfounded. But I heard the same stuff when the inspiration plugin happened. We're doing a lot of work um, on the bold grid side to be friendly with Gutenberg because we just want to extend WordPress, not take you out of it. Like today, we extend Tiny MCE. This is just a nice evolution of that. So I think communication is key, and I think the fear mongering that a lot of people have with Gutenberg is really unfounded. Because I remember CMSs when people were like, "Oh, CMSs, that's going to kill my business." People editing their own com their their own content, cats and dogs living together. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the next new thing. In two years, there'll be another new thing that wants to be about. So. Yeah. Just... At extra points for the uh, for the Ghostbusters reference, just so we know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I I'm vocal against it being in core now before there's accessibility, <laughs> right? Like before you can just use a keyboard and create a post properly. Um, but no, I definitely think it'll. You know, I don't. And, and in terms of, I have a plugin that's a shortcode, right? So I kind of want it to be it, once Gutenberg is ready, a Gutenberg block. So um, I guess on my side, it would just be learning more development and, and getting you know to grips with this whole new editor and how it works. But um, yeah. <laughs> that mic doesn't work at all. That mic doesn't work at all. No, it's, it's going in and out. It's going in and out. We'll do our best. Carry on. And so we have a lot of people asking about that as well. And one of the things that we've done again is create um, a whole blog series called Playing with Blocks. And uh, that shows you how our plugin works with blocks and how you can work with blocks, even whether you're using a plugin or not, and how Gutenberg works. Uh, it's really nothing to be afraid of. Actually, it's just one, another way of, of progress and making things a little better. I remember when they changed the way Facebook looked, and everybody was up in arms, and my, my biggest thing to say to people was, well, you know Facebook's free, well, so is WordPress. So WordPress is free. We, it's about the community. This is what that's been growing. This is the way we've been um, changing things. This is the evolution of the way they do things. Um, a lot of us are using builders already. We're using Divi, and we're using uh, um, Beaver Builder, we're using all those things that are doing a lot of what Gutenberg will do for us without having to use those outside things. So I think that if you play with it, you're going to actually appreciate a lot of what it can do. I've been using it a little bit, and it's actually kind of fun. So um, I agree with everything everybody has said, but the, the bottom line is it's going to be painful for your clients uh, to all of a sudden be presented with a new editor, right? So in my mind, as a provider and as someone working with your clients, you could do a couple of things. One, you could install the Gutenberg plugin right now and tell them what it is and ask them to become familiar with it. When Gutenberg ships in WordPress core, install the classic editor plugin and let your clients know that that's there. And there's a lot of work being done to, to port uh, the classic editor content to the new Gutenberg block system. So I think it really just comes down to education and trying to ease the pain for your clients a little bit. The only other thing I would add to that is, is, especially if you're a freelancer working for an agency, we're always looking for opportunities to help our clients but also to make money. And whenever something comes along that is a requirement, we have an opportunity to <coughs> educate, hold classes, and that's another way that we can make money. And it's not always about making money, but it is a way for us to um, extend some services and increase our bottom line as well. And engage your clients. Engage your clients. Right? So, you know, Offer a class, maybe offer a class in your community. 
um, do some online coursework, have an opportunity to teach people how to use it and extend your time to their time and, and then honor that time by actually charging a little bit of money for it. And that's not a bad thing to be able to do if you're a freelancer. So. Join your local WordPress meetup. There you go. What about you? talk, right? See that guy in the back there? Go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so to be compliant with the new privacy, the GTR, is there the like a, mm -hmm. a plug-in something that will make yes. it really smooth and simple for all the... So the question is, is, is there a plug-in that will make GDPR the easy? New, yeah, well, it's basic, simple, easy. Simple, so easy. you have a site and you just have the plug-in and it will... Okay, well, does, does somebody want to yeah. describe yeah. GDPR and then... Yeah. Right, the right, so yeah. it's got mic, so it's on you now. Well, I mean, it's, um, yeah, so so no plugin will guarantee and cannot guarantee. And that was actually a bit of a thing where there were some plugins that were coming in, and they were like, oh, just install this plugin, and you're GDPR compliant. No, because like, it depends on what your business does, right? So yeah, there is the aspect of your site, and um, you know data that your site's collecting, and any comments, and the ability for someone to be able to request, hey, can you delete the stuff I added to your site, and stuff like that, to, to, as part of being compliant. Um, but there is definitely a lot of, a lot of aspects of it. A friend of mine actually wrote, um, a pretty, it's pretty lengthy, because GDPR is quite lengthy, uh, but it's like GDPR in plain English. Um, and if you search for that, I mean, that gives you kind of some, some more info and some detail you can dig into, but I mean, to, to guarantee it, so it's basically you know, updating a privacy policy, which everyone's seen, and then also, yeah, like getting legal advice, depending again on, on what your business is. And this, again, is, I think, one of those fear-mongering things. Um, GDPR is just the next thing. Uh, first of all, none of us are attorneys, so <laughs> putting that out there. Um, but yeah, there's no attorney. Everyone was looking for the simple solution to things. But this is akin to the US, the United States, the Department of Justice mandated that they follow accessibility standards if you have a physical location. And there's been lawsuits and lot, millions of dollars that companies have paid the website's not being accessible. But do you see everyone, all the, you know, how many sites in the US are accessible? Mostly not many. So this is gonna be one of those things. I actually saw a keynote by Edward Snowden. He was talking about GDPR by satellite. Um, at, at, uh, at CloudFest, he's like, you know, there's gonna be a rash of lawsuits and things, but the whole point of this is to push best practices for everybody in one direction. Yeah, will there be those stories of the small business who goes out of business because of some GDPR lawsuits? Sure, but it's trying to get everyone in the same headspace. And the fact it took this act to get everyone kind of moving in this direction, kind of telling to, you know, how important to take privacy overall. So do your research. Do not trust the gurus online. Um, you know, and don't just trust installing one thing to fix all your problems, but also. Don't stay awake on it. If you're doing best practices, you most likely will be fine. But again, not going to try. So to speak to your question about how to make your site GDPR compliant, uh, the latest version of WordPress, WordPress 4.9.6, comes with some built-in GDPR privacy tools. If you go to tools <laughs> in the WP admin, you will see a privacy link. And there, there's some information about the GDPR. Basically, what the GDPR means, or what you would have to do at a bare minimum, is basically have a privacy policy on your site and make sure that you're detailing uh, not just the information that you collect, uh, but if you're using MailChimp or some other email marketing platform, if you're using WooCommerce, if you're using any other third-party Google Analytics, all of that needs to be specified in your privacy policy. But as long as you're being transparent with the information that you may or may not be collecting when you visit this site, then you're compliant, right? So, and, and it's also a bit of a, of, of a wild west, right? Because the day that GDPR went into effect, there was $8 billion in lawsuits filed, right? And it was to Facebook and Google and places like that. So, so again, with Mike's uh, mention of what did you mention? Uh, the accessibility, in the the accessibility okay. laws in the U.S. It's it's kind of going to be the same thing, right? It's not going to affect mm -hmm. most of us. Uh, it's more to guide uh, a best practice and maybe make some examples out of people. Yeah. 
-hmm. And some of the other tools that are associated with creating that, that uh, right. privacy policy, right, is that there's other tools built into the uh, WordPress corner on that 4.9.6 that allows somebody to request that their information be deleted from your site or to be shown what information about them has been collected on your site. So if you enact those things on your site, if somebody sends you a request, you can very simply use those tools to do those to do those processes. And WordPress has built that right into the new core. So if you haven't updated to 496 yet, first run a backup, mm -hmm. and then and then hit that update button. Does that help? Yes, a lot. Especially knowing that the admin is within the admin. That's built into WordPress somewhere. That possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's nice because as soon as you do update to 4.9.6, like the first time you log into your dashboard, you get a little pop-up that says you should go do these things right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. Next question from the floor. All right, I'm, I'm going to throw one out there. I had a feeling it might. <laughs> <laughs> Without using your own plugins, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. <laughs> Name your favorite plugin <laughs> and why, without naming your own or another member of the panel. Nope, not gonna happen. So give us your favorite plugin and why, without mentioning your own or another oh, member. Uh, of the panel. Out of the repo or premium? Or? Doesn't matter. Okay. For whatever reason and why. Okay. Uh, Beaver Builder for me. Um, I know HTML. <laughs> I, I have been building sites. <laughs> <laughs> I've been building sites. I mean, I just I met them before you. Come on. <laughs> so um, it's all over. Yeah, right? Come back, come back. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I know HTML. I know CSS. You know, I know all these things. But like to be able to update the copy uh, on the front from the front end of the site um, and see exactly how it's going to look and very quickly make some changes uh, without having to drop it to the editor. Or, theme files or anything else. Um, yeah, so this has just been a huge time saver and a uh, nice thing. <laughs> I couldn't mention yours. That's true. I did, I did qualify it. I did qualify it. All right. What do you got, Demo? Um, He's trying to think whoever Brian's talking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going through all the competitors. Yeah, all right. Good luck. Um, <laughs> Challenge accepted. Uh, Akiba Backup um, is probably my favorite. Um, I like for two reasons. Um, most of my favorite plugins are cross-platform. If it doesn't work, if it only works on one CMS, I tend not to use it, with the exception of you know, Bold Grid, which you know that might change in the future. Um, because I like to be able to keep my workflow if I'm using WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, Magento, or anything. Akiba Backup is cool though because you can create backups, automate them, send them off-site, all that normal stuff. But what it does is it makes a JPA file. It's .jpa. And to restore a WordPress, you just stick the JPA file, kickstart.php, and it restores all the files, all the databases, anything on any WordPress-capable server. So you don't have to install anything or do any weird, like, duplicate of Pro executor packages. And it's, a, it's just super easy to, like, drop it, drop in two files, and you can restore any site. It changes the domains and all the paths for you automatically, and uh, keep the backups rock solid. And a lot of hosts default to that package, so like Cloud Access, for example, you just drop the JPA and it'll deploy right in there. So keep a backup, which works on multiple platforms, I think is pretty rock solid, and I, it's my go-to backup tool. So. How do you spell it? It's A-K-E-E-B-A. A-K-E-E-B-A. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have an amazing day after party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give a shout out to Caldera Forms because Cal Caldera <laughs> Caldera right, Josh. Caldera Forms um, they operate on a premium version, so there's a great free version that's in their repository, and they uh, they can you can set up their forms in multiple columns, which I love to, to be able to do that. Um, you can rearrange things. It has a lot of the same functionality that you find in your other form builders. Um, there's also the add-on model, so you can connect to Stripe, you connect to PayPal, um, other things like that. And the functionality within it is phenomenal. I had to build a client site that had a calculator built in, and all the different fields had to build off one another and show a difference 
at the bottom between the different ways that numbers played in, and, by the, and I couldn't find a way to solve it. And somebody said, hey, have you tried this new Caldera form? This was about three years ago. And it did exactly what I needed it to, right out of the box with a free model, and I was in love from that point on. And uh, they just keep getting better. So, Caldera forms. Yeah. yeah. So I'll have to uh, echo the page builder mention, and, and there really isn't one specific because I've used a lot of them. Uh, I, since, even though I've been using WordPress since 2005, uh, the first thing I did was try to build a theme, and it was really ugly because I'm not a designer and no one wanted to use it. And then I tried to build a plugin, and it broke for most other people except for me. So I depend on page builders. Um, to run our business. Uh, so, you know, you create the, the typical landing page where you have features and benefits and pricing tables and you want it to look nice and, and you want uh, uh, people to take those call to act, calls to action. So, um, any of the Bold Grid, uh, Beaver Builder, uh, their Site Origin, Divi is another one. Um, they're all really good in my opinion. There's another plugin I use often on every install, it's called Duplicate Post. Oh, and you can duplicate posts, pages, any custom post type that any plugin adds. Uh, and what I find myself doing is working a really long time on one page uh, that I know I'm going to be duplicating for other products. And then I simply duplicate that page and then start switching out the, the content and the images. And, but the, the layout and stuff is already there. Mm. The other one that kind of works really nice with that is Post Expirator. So if you have a post or a post that you need to have a sun, you know a sunset on, you can set it up automatically to shut down at a certain time. So when I built a church website, at, I didn't want the Christmas Eve service to be there for days after, but I didn't want to wake up Christmas morning and have to disable that page either. So you know at midnight on Christmas Eve, that Christmas Eve service post goes away, and it uh, you can expire it to draft, you can expire it to trash, and so I expired it to draft because guess what, Christmas Eve's coming again next year. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's actually one I suggested on, uh, I think Catherine Presner asked in one purpose. Yeah. The first one I wrote. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah, a, a good one. Maddie, yeah, over to you. Uh, then we'll come over here. Biggest WordPress nightmare and how did you solve it? Biggest WordPress nightmare, you read my mind. Uh, <laughs> biggest <laughs> WordPress nightmare <laughs> and how did you solve it? Okay, so I had to solve mine three times because I got hacked. I cleaned it up, but I didn't clean it up enough. I got hacked again. Oh. And I cleaned it up, but I didn't know that when they hack you, they make admin <laughs> accounts. And so I had to clean it up a third time. Um, and that was the entire night before WordCamp Montreal. I didn't sleep but 45 minutes. Mm. Got up and gave a talk the next day and then crashed for about three days to the wake up and discover that it was hacked again. So <laughs> the yes, biggest thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I became really good friends with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to learn how to not let that happen again. But anyway, yeah, I think getting hacked is one of the worst nightmares that can happen, especially it's one thing when it's your own site, it's another thing when it's 21 client sites on share hosting. So if you weren't in my session earlier, if you were in my session earlier, you've already heard the story, so I'll keep it short. But my, uh, my worst WordPress experience was um, having a WordPress multi-site installation get hacked that I was earning enough revenue from where I was going to quit my day job by within probably a weeks or months. Um, and the how did I solve it? I solved it by shutting down the service and refunding all my customers. Oh. And then getting pretty depressed about it. Uh, but then seeing the silver lining in that now I was aware of website security best practices and then moved on from there. So uh, that was the worst. <laughs> I don't know if I call this the worst, but it's a funny story. So this was eight years ago. Um, I was at a company called SPC, and we made bank websites, hundreds and hundreds of community bank and credit union websites, um, and you know, realtor careers and stuff like that. Um, we were a Joomla shop, and, and we only did Joomla at that time. Um, and there was a real estate company that needed a very specific. Um, Century 21 WordPress only plugin. So, um, being the Joomla shop that we were, and me not being open minded at the time, um, instead of making a WordPress site, I found a way to install WordPress as an extension inside of Joomla. <laughs> so, <coughs> it is possible. It's, uh, yeah. Um, uh, 
There's actually there's actually a pl uh, extension out there called uh, WordPress for Joomla and also Drupal for Joomla. You can, they actually make it for the other way around, and it allows for any WordPress plugin widget to be in any Joomla module position. So and uh, it worked. Um, it wasn't the most technically efficient site, but that got me uh, really interested in WordPress development, and then the rest is kind of history. Now I work on multiple platforms, not just those two. So, so one that might uh, be really able. So there are services like ManageWP. There are other ones that um, allow you to update plugins across multiple sites. So instead of having to go into each site, go to plugins, and click update now on each of the plugins, you can go to like ManageWP and just go, Sure, update everything. <laughs> that totally always works all the time. And running it, running it right before you go to bed. When you, when you have clients, on Friday. When you have clients uh, you know, overseas and in Australia who are awake when you're sleeping is a terrible and make idea. Make sure you turn off your backup plugin before you yeah. turn yes. off the backup. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, have the, or have the backup fire right after you did this, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so uh, yes, yeah, so the person is me, uh, so it didn't totally, it didn't totally break the site such that, like, nobody could buy, but what happened was that uh, one of the plugins I used to, like, verify licenses um, needed a, a database upgrade, and I mean, like, to be honest, it should have probably just kept working until I did this database upgrade. Because uh, it kind of, even when you go in, it kind of makes it sound like it's, you know, hey, you should do this soon, but really you need to do it now. Um, and then when I tried to run it, it didn't, so then, yeah, I had to roll back uh, to, to a backup video. Before, luckily, I had all my backups, one click restore with WP Engine, it was fine. But, um, yeah, don't, there, there is, you definitely be wary of, of ones like that. So, uh, in, in that. In that case as well, a service like that can have a thing where it, like, looks at your homepage. It's like, oh, yeah, your homepage looks okay, but that doesn't mean all the functionality for your website is still correct. So, um, yeah, always visit uh, the site and your client site before, after you do anything like that. We had a question over here, and then we'll go to the back. Go ahead. Um, question. I started volunteering with a food bank that has like a monthly activity calendar that they just upload as a PDF to the website. But I wanted to make it interactive so that each of like the events could link to a sub page mm -hmm. um, that would have more information about it. But what would be like a good calendar plugin for that? that would be <laughs> Um, he's asking about how do we go from having a PDF event calendar to actually making it more interactive, and uh, you know, can we recommend a plugin? I don't know, Brian. Yeah, I don't what do you know. Think? <laughs> so one of my plugins, Event Calendar Newsletter, integrates with about nine or ten uh, different calendar plugins or and themes. Like some themes have a calendar within it. Um, it depends. I mean, like you, some uh, free ones like Events Manager will give you the ability to have recurring events. Um, the events calendar by Modern Tribe is quite good, and, and one of the most popular calendar plugins, if not the most popular uh, calendar plugins. I think it's on the featured plugins page uh, at the moment. Um, so that, that one's a good way to start, but again, like it's looking into what kind of features you need. Do you need recurring events? Um, you know, one of my plugins, like a short code plugin, if you want to list stuff somewhere else, but most calendar plugins will give you that ability to you know, install it, uh, add an event, you know, add details about the event, where it is, the description, and who's organizing it, and contact information, and all that stuff. And then, so now, you can press event uh, calendar on the front end. You can click on the events, and like you said, have a separate page uh, to see the event details added to their you know, calendar and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the events calendar I want to try this has a lot of features, looks decent, um, and it's one that I typically recommend to uh, to at least start with. Um, and then go from there. Thanks. We have another question. Go ahead, sir. Um, so I'm just wondering if you guys would know of any page builders that let you, uh, I have to use build speaker builder, but that allow you to build it visually uh, on like Divi where you have to make a change and then refresh your front end. So you're just doing everything from the front end, but doesn't fill your site with an ass ton of crappy C or HTML with like 62 classes and everything else. They're in there like literally. I just want three set images. I need a box. <laughs> so for the benefit, let's, let's see if we can clean this up a little. Right here. So are we looking? We're looking for a page builder that does it visually, like not that you have to go and drop stuff in, refresh, and then go over here. 
uh, something that you can literally do almost live, I guess, visually, and uh, that has all those place holders. Yeah, and that doesn't add a lot of extraneous code. The short yes. codes and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Is that, is that describe some it as crap stuff, right. but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beaver Builder definitely is, is decent for that. But I think I think demo has an opinion. <laughs> yeah, Genesis is great. <laughs> Uh, actually, Beaver Builder is really powerful. I actually don't even say that we're competitor to Beaver Builder because there's no works with Beaver Builder, to be honest. Um, but you can use, because we have 12 different plugins, one of them is a drag and drop page builder, no short code, it's all visual, and it's all bootstrap based. So there's no short, you know, you can move it on, edit content. Um, but our stuff's modular, so you can use these different pieces of us with a Beaver Builder or a Divi or any of that other stuff if you want to do that. Uh, depending on what you're using. Um, I like to say where it works for WordPress, you can get a full five page website in under 15 minutes with content, um, you know, for a restaurant or like a, you know, photography site or something. So that's kind of our niche, but um, we also have blocks. We have hundreds of thousands of artificially intelligent generated blocks that you can use um, in our platform. So it might work for you, it's free, check it out. If it doesn't, try Beaver, it's a great tool. It is not easy to teach builder, Beavers to build websites, trust me. <laughs> Actually, I have a follow-up. Especially when they're on our national end, we're one of them. <laughs> Just uh, one follow-up comment with that. Um, so I've used a lot of different uh, page builders, uh, including all the ones mentioned, uh, but also the one by WP Bakery, which still adds short codes, right? Um, and for a long time, Divi was doing that as well, but I just had a conversation with a guy uh, a few days ago, and I was under the impression that Divi was still outputting short codes and extraneous uh, uh, tons of stuff, uh, but I'm told now that it's all valid uh, HTML. So maybe something to revisit if you, if you like Divi. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you definitely, if we're any page builder, if it accidentally, accidentally gets disabled or whatever, you don't want your whole site to suddenly <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely test that before you go on. Actually, I, I mean, shortcodes are important because you can't move the content, right? You know, you got 40 shortcodes in one paragraph. And so, no matter what you use, I feel like you need to own your content. So, um, I think shortcodes for page builders, I mean, with Gen with Gutenberg, they're all going to go away anyway. So, um, these are good movements. Anyway. Short, code, short codes, days are numbered, I think. I don't know. Yeah, just to follow up. So, can you talk about um, Solid Grid and just what themes it works with and doesn't work with? Like, do you need to have a specific theme? Just generally follow up to that. You mean for, for Bold Grid itself? Does yeah. it work with specific themes? Yeah, okay. exactly. Demo? Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so Bold Grid works with, we have two options. So, if it's a bootstrap based theme, you can use all of our tool set. Um, if it's not a bootstrap based theme, we have a translation layer that does have to stay enabled for it to translate from our you know, code to whatever your theme framework is. Um, but that's only for the um, <coughs> page and post builder that we have. The other, every other plugin works with any theme under the sun because that's not visual with things like SEO plugins or backup plugins. So um, Bootstrap is what we're kind of based off of, but if you don't have a Bootstrap based theme, like let's say the core 2017 theme, we do have a translation layer you can use. Okay, next question. Sir, go ahead. Um, I was trying to back up a, a website the other day, and I'm fairly new to WordPress, but I've been running uh, one big website for years um, and with this one I was just trying to use the default export and I made a specific directory for a static page and the whole export thing just basically crashed mm -hmm. because of uh, it didn't understand that there was something non-WordPress in there. What do you recommend maybe is, because when you talk about some backup tools, is there any ones that would be able to get around that sort of thing and be able to understand that there might be something non-WordPress right. in the site. So, so instead of going with an export, you want to know about uh, some backup <coughs> plugins that may or may not assist with such things. Yeah, rather more, than doing more robust, manual. perhaps. More robust. Okay. I guess we can go down the line. Uh, there's a lot out there. Uh, Keep a backup is a good tool, like I mentioned earlier. Um, Bold Grid Backup is another option. Um, backup Buddy, and the list kind of goes on. And there's services, right? Like. Um, where you can pay five bucks a month and it'll automatically take your site offline. But with all backups, I look back on the rule of three. 
If you don't have your site in three places, you don't have it. So don't trust your host. Don't trust that, you know, you have to have your site in three places and also trust your backups. All these people are like, I back everything up and our backups are all corrupted. So, but there's a lot of good plugins out there for backup. Have you been taking notes from Brian? Because I know he said that to me about a million no, times. Oh, yeah, exactly. If, yeah, like that, if your data doesn't exist in at least three places, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, right. Because, right. yeah, you have a backup. And, yeah, you go to a story, like you said, it's corrupted. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, there's there's so many different, yeah, there's a lot of different backup plugins, like Duplicator Pro, but yeah, personally, WP Engine, and then I also use, you know, Vault Press or, or Jetpack Pro or whatever they call themselves now, which is a service you pay, like, 350 Canadian a month or something to, to have that extra backup, and a kind of a one-click restore as well, uh, but again, you want to you wanna test that. Oh, and uh, Manage WP, actually, I'm using their backup service as well. That's, I think I have a fourth layer for an e-commerce one that backs up every hour. Because uh, free commerce sites need to be pretty frequent. So, yeah, I have at least three. <laughs> so, I have at least three backups programs that I use. Oh, I can... <laughs> 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 they have the client and everything. Um, I use Backup Buddy a lot. Um, I also use Duplicator mm -hmm. and then um, Updraft Plus. Yes. So, yes. 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 Uh, well, no, I was just saying, um, like, WP Engine actually has a list, and I'm sure others do, of, of like plugins they don't allow. Um, and there are some, like, I can't remember exactly which one, and I don't want to quote the wrong thing, but some will kind of degrade your site while the backup's running. Um, so just being conscious of that, especially if you have a decent amount of traffic, um, or even not that many traffic, you don't want your site to crash because you're taking a backup. So, right. um, yeah, just, just be conscious of that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if I heard your question correctly, was it that you have non-WordPress uh, directories in there that you also wanted to make sure were backed up? I, I guess I was just trying to back up the WordPress directories and have it ignore the non-WordPress ones. Yeah, so many, if not most, of these backup solutions will allow you to include or exclude different directories that are found on the server. Uh, so I would look, if you're looking at any of the backup plugins, I would look for, for that kind of feature set being called out specifically. Well, and, and because she's not on the panel, I'm going to second the updraft plus because I know that Kira uses it incessantly. I, I, the, the thing, well, and that's, that's one of the things I liked about updraft plus, so I'm going to throw that in because it can go to anything. Like, you know, um, Backup Buddy usually does it to a couple of different sources. And it's a, it's a paid service. Updraft Plus has a free one. We'll go to S3. It'll go to OneDrive. It'll go to wherever the heck you want it to go. Yeah, so, Dropbox, Google Drive. Yeah, all yeah. So I'll, I'll second that one just for my own. You know, I had to throw in my two cents. So, sir. The other two cents, because you guys were laughing about it. If it's not in three places, it doesn't exist. And if you have to prove that you can restore it, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. That's right. You can use it at the same time. If I have to try to restore it, you might say test your backups. <laughs> Yes, test your backups. Yeah. Test your backups. Make sure you I always saw, saw backups as, a, as three different, that you can have it not work and tell you, or it can work and tell you, but it can also not work and not tell you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> track of um, oh, yeah, potential. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Question over here. Um, so hosting-wise, um, VPS is, is a much more secure and better than shared hosting, or like, is there really? So is, uh, we're talking about hosting? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Choose VPS versus shared hosting, or like, yeah. VPS versus shared hosting? Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of security. Right. In terms of security. Some other okay. Crash. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, it, it depends on the VPS, right? So, so VPS stands for virtual private server, right? So you're not actually on a private server. You are virtually on your own section of the server, right? Um, but some VPSs, right, like like ones that run or ones you can spin out with services like that, Digital Ocean and whatnot, um, it's secure, more secure in the sense that you aren't sharing, I guess, some of the resources with other people. But also can be less secure in the sense that you're the one typically who has to manage some of the like lower level upgrades and security stuff that, that goes kind of behind the scenes of uh, a server, right? So personally, I would normally recommend having you know you can upgrade so that you have more resources if your site requires it, uh, but having like a managed uh, WordPress hosting, right? Uh, because then they are the ones who are doing like not only like the back end server stuff but also a lot of the WordPress upgrades. So 
they'll upgrade your core version, right? If there's a security patch, uh, they'll usually find it, even with plugins. Like a lot of times, like they don't guarantee that they'll find everything, but if there is a known issue, typically they'll be like, hey, you have this plugin installed, you have this version, it's insecure, you need to upgrade or we'll do it for you, otherwise you might disable your site or something for the interest of <laughs> you know, your visitors, right? Um, so yeah, so, so VPS can be more secure, but it, it can be a lot more work as well. So yeah, I'd stick with managed services. Sure, Adam's gonna have a yeah. Nice. Feel but oh, okay. yeah. so just what I want to say about hosting is I always go. You guys ask all the time, especially as speakers, and go to a lot of camps. What's the best host? What's the best WordPress host? And it's a question that you really can't answer because everyone's needs are so different, right? So like there are people that really care about top level service, and they're willing to pay for maybe a managed host. So like a WP Engine or locally, uh, Boomhost I believe has a local. Uh, managed WordPress offering, and you know there's other ones out there as well, cloudaccess.net, other people just care about price, they want the cheapest thing out there, so maybe an EIG option, or some other, you know, some other host might be better um, for them. Some people really care about phone support. You know, I know hosts that have, you know, local <laughs> US-based phone support, and will walk you through how to add a page and a post, and spend an hour on the phone with you, but you pay for that. Um, sometimes, you know, security, so I don't think there's one right answer for everybody, um, I think a lot of people buy dedicated servers and VPSs and things because they get bad information and they don't maintain that infrastructure correctly. It can be a world of hurt. I had a client, a freelance client the other day, she's like, oh, I got a dedicated server because it's better. And I'm like, no, your traffic, no. You, this is like the worst idea for you. You're spending $800 a month for something, a site you could live on a managed account. So um, really do your research and find out what company is right for you because what, you know, we could poll and say, okay, who doesn't like this host? Half the room raised their hand. Who loves that host? Half the room raises their hand. Because people have very specific examples. And um, I recommend <coughs> start with the official, uh, you know, WordPress sponsors or go to, you know, um, the sponsors of like this WordCamp. Some of them are hosts, check them out. And, but also expand your search. See if you care about local or non-local, things like that. Because there's no <coughs> right answer for everybody with hosting. Okay, I agree. See, and the other thing you may want to consider, and, and a lot of places like banks, right? If you have a specific um, uh, requirement for it to be in certain countries, that's another thing to consider, right? If your host is, say, in the US, you know, is my site going to, you know, get open by whatever? Well, the fact is they can probably reach into Canada too. If Homeland Security wants your stuff, they will get it, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's in Canada or the U.S. We, there's the reciprocal, but you know there are some websites that require that it be in a particular location. So that's an, another thing to consider. But yeah, um, I, I will always you know mirror sort of what what Demo said is go to the people that sponsor these. Some of the biggest sponsors of WordCamps are hosting companies. Put them to the test, please. Ask them every question that you possibly have because they are probably going to be the ones to get your money. Right? So make sure that they, they answer that. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're out of time. First of all, I want to thank our panelists for sticking around for so long. Thank you very much. And for so far away. Thank you guys for sticking around for all your wonderful questions.